Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono white life gain combo deck, but it's not your typical life gain deck. Instead, we're playing four copies of Defiler of Faith. The 5 mana 5 5 Phyrexian Human from Dominaria United has Vigilance and says we can use Phyrexian mana, which is essentially two life, to pay for our white permanent spells, replacing one of those white mana symbols. And then whenever we cast a white permanent spell, regardless of using Phyrexian mana, we get to create a 1 1 white soldier creature token. So Defiler of Faith combos very nicely alongside Oketra's Monument, a 3-mana legendary artifact, reducing the cost of white creature spells by 1, and whenever we cast a creature spell, we get to make a 1-1 white warrior creature token with Vigilance. So turn 3 Monument sets up a turn 4 Defiler, and then not only do we get a 1-mana discount for Monument, but we can also potentially pay 2 life, that way we can essentially play any white 2-drops for free, as long as their mana cost is 1 and a white, and in the case of course Skyfisher, that means we can keep replaying it infinitely for as long as we have life to pay essentially, because the Skyfisher is a 2-3 flyer, when it enters a battlefield we return a permanent we control to its owner's hand. It does not say another permanent, so Skyfisher can pick itself back up, so we can essentially keep replaying it over and over again, making a 1-1 token with Monument and making a 1-1 token with Defiler of Faith. So this combo is limited by the amount of life we have, since at some point we won't be able to use the Phyrexian mana for that discount, but that's where all the life gain elements come in handy. At one mana, four copies of Ajani's Welcome, four copies of Lunark Veteran, and four copies of Soul Warden. So now whenever we play Skyfisher, not only do we gain life from Skyfisher itself, but we also gain life of the Warrior token and the Soldier token entering the battlefield, so we can actually gain infinite life on top of making infinite tokens this way. So we can do it as early as turn 4 if the stars align, but the backup plan of just playing a Monument or a Defiler with all these other synergies is still very powerful. And if we don't have access to Core Skyfisher to combo off, we still have some replacements. Aviary Mechanic and Rescuer Twinga when they enter the battlefield can return another permanent we control to its owner's hand. So that does mean that they don't get to combo off by themselves, since we can pick up the same card over and over again. But if we have two of these copies, either two Mechanics, two Twingas or one of each, then they can pick each other back up, so we can still combo off infinitely if we have both Monument and Defiler, otherwise the combo may be limited by the amount of mana we have available, so we can still make a ton of 1-1s every turn. And then to round out our deck, we also have four copies of Portable Hole as a bit of interaction to take care of early creatures from the opponent. Can also potentially pick up our Portable Hole again with our various creatures, so we can maybe exile tokens repeatedly, or maybe reset some plus one counters, so there's a bit of synergy there too. And it's also a white permanent spell that we can potentially play for free using Defiler of Faith. So yeah, that's the basic gist of our deck, trying to combo infinitely, making tons of tokens with Defiler and Monument. And then our mana base has three copies of Castle Ardenvale to potentially make more 1-1 one -one tokens in the late game, and then one Iganjo for a bit of interaction, and 20 basic planes. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and this hand is missing, maybe Okatra's Monuments and a couple lands, but... Uh, I think it's still a keep. We can gain quite a bit of life early with Welcome and Soul Warden. And then Double Mechanic can uh, sort of pick itself up to keep making more tokens with Defiler. Although up against the Mill deck, which is probably not a great matchup for us. Since uh, unless we make infinite tokens on turn 4, they're probably going to mill us out before we get to anything close to lethal. Portable hole helps. So now we can exile the drowned secrets. And then we want to hit our land drops to be able to play Defiler eventually. Secret Keeper mills a bunch of land. Take one. Right, land is good. So I can play a mechanic and then pick up Soul Warden just to gain some more life. Of 
but I don't think our life total is going to matter. Ashiok will exile our graveyard for good. So we want to present a bit of a board to pressure Ashiok. And there's Monument, okay. So a land next turn and we can infinitely combo off. So there's still hope. 39 cards remain, opponent's got two cards left. So best they can do is Hideous Laughter plus Millus for 10. That's unlikely to be good enough. I guess Ashio gets to activate one more time too. And then we still need to draw a land. Tasha City Slafter gets us down to 13 cards. Uh oh. And no land. Okay, so that might be game over here. Best we can do play veteran and then we need to leave ourselves with a mechanic so that we can actually combo with Defiler next turn. So I don't have any good attacks, I can play Veteran. And then I guess Mechanic pick itself up, just to make some 1-1s. What if I pick a Portable Hole here to exile Apprentice? Then I still can't kill Ashiok, so there's no point. So yeah, for a point as any mill cards remaining, we're probably done for. But now we at least have a few 1-1s to kill Ashiok on our following turn. 12 cards remaining. It's gonna go down to 8, so any mill sorcery should be lethal. And we get to untap, and we actually drew the land. Okay, let us uh, play Defiler and hope for the best. Maybe they have some counter spells left. Thought Collapse, ouch. So, four cards left. And then all at Ashiok. I guess we don't even have to send everyone. I can send some things elsewhere. Don't really care about Soul Warden dying, which is probably the creature that gets blocked by Apprentice. So then... I can send Mechanic and, let's say, uh, a 1-1 one -one at our opponent, and Ashok should still die. Maybe should play it safe and send an extra 1-1 one -one at Ashok in case they were sandbagging a removal to make sure Ashok dies. Alright, so then they can just block Mechanic with Secret Keeper at that point, and not take any damage. So could have not attacked with Soul Warden maybe and sent everyone else at uh, Ashiok. But Veteran is equally as valuable. Alright, so three cards left. They could easily have another Thought Collapse, but we have to try to go for the combo since we're not going to kill the opponent in three turns with what we have in play. Although, yeah, I mean, if I just go for Mechanic, they also just counter it and mill me. So playing Defiler is just the same. Make some tokens. And that resolved. Okay. So we get to infinitely combo and then sweat it out for a turn to see if our opponent can top deck a mill card. Play Soul Warden first. And then we'll make 20 plus tokens here just to be safe. Infinite life is not going to be enough to save us. So play Mechanic, pick up Author Mechanic, and we can keep looping those until we have enough tokens. Opponent does get to Scry with a Castle end of turn, so they very likely find another Mill card. But if it's, let's say, a Drowned Secrets or another Counter Spell, we don't care. So there are a few blanks. Mechanic, pick up Mechanic. We 
We're making two tokens per cycle. Opponent finally goes for castle and puts both cards on the bottom. Okay, so there's hope. Opponent going for a blind draw step to mill us. And they're not going to get another turn. Nice. So three more of these should do it. Another strategy is to bore our opponent to death, but uh, we'll keep it fair. Okay, so how many tokens do we have? This should be enough, but I'll pick up a mechanic in case we need to keep comboing next turn for some reason. I'll do it one more time just to be safe. I wouldn't want to lose to a bounce spell. Although if they bounce, I guess they just bounce Secret Keeper and they uh, mill us out, so that doesn't really help. Alright, that's enough. Can attack with all. Get in some more damage. And the moment of truth. Are we dead to another mill effect? Or do we get there with infinite combo? Let's find out. Could have replayed veteran there too if we wanted to. E to extinction, exiles defiler, that's not good enough. Do we get to untap? Looks like our opponent may have disconnected, so we'll have to wait it out. And our opponent finally concedes. Awesome, so the infinite combo got there with two cards left in library. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing a copy of Oketra's Monuments. We do have Defiler, three lands and lots of life gain, bit of interaction. I think it's still a keep. Kick things off with a Soul Warden. And then we also still need a creature that we can keep replaying once we have a Defiler out. Sanctum Weaver is worth exiling. And there's our Skyfisher. Now, uh, enchantments could be a tough matchup since they can lock us out with Solemnity plus 9 lives. And then it doesn't matter how many tokens we make. But at least 9 lives we can beat by making tons of tokens. It's gonna be Circle of Confinement to exile a Soul Warden, that's fine. And then play Veteran, keep up Chwinga. I think we still hang on to Skyfisher even though we could just cast it to apply more pressure. I don't think we win the fair way by dealing damage. We'll need to combo off here. Borrow time. Let's see what that uh, exiles here. Portable hole, so we'll Chwinga to save Portable hole, and then we can exile Sanctum Weaver again. Okay. So Portable hole. Mechanic can pick up a land as well. Although... Maybe I'm better off picking up the Chwinga, so we have that available for the future. So we'll attack first. So we have the slightly more valuable creature in hand. Still waiting for lands 4 and 5. Hello, Haunting, okay. So our opponent's gonna make tons of spirit tokens. But uh, yeah, we can certainly go over the top of that with our Defiler. So attack with the team. Opponent is down to 8 in the meantime, so maybe we can actually get there with regular damage. If I play 
Chwinga, what does that accomplish? Can gain a bit of life. I guess we can just play Chwinga, play Mechanic and be tapped out. Just to gain four life here. Might be okay. All right. So a land next turn doesn't quite combo off infinitely. Since uh, we don't have Monument out. But it would be a nice start. And a rest in peace to Exile Graveyards, that's fine. Opponent now has two Clerics on defense and there's a Monument, perfect, so... Now we don't need to expose Defiler to removal. Chwinga can save Monument if needed. And next turn we can infinitely combo off. Sterling Grove is acceptable since they won't be able to play whatever they search up yet. Although if they have 9 lives and Solemnity we could still potentially lose to that combo. Although we should be able to present a lethal army of 1-1s one before they can get both in play and that's all that matters. Take 6, that's fine. And then I'll hang on to the Chwinga. Play Defiler, and then Skyfisher can make all the tokens we need. So I'm not sure what Sterling Grove can search up to mess with that plan. But the fact that we have a Twinga we can cast for free basically means we can save any of our key pieces. So Skyfisher, pay two life but we'll gain more than two for each iteration of the loop. So not only are we making infinite tokens, but we're also gaining infinite life. Which is a nice side effect here. And Skyfisher is the easiest one to combo off with, as it can just pick itself up. Opponents at eight, but we'll make enough tokens in case they make more spirits. And yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Sterling Grove could get 9 lives, but we have more than 9 attackers. So that's not good enough. If they already have Solemnity or 9 lives in hand, then uh, they shouldn't have the mana to cast both. So I'm not sure what could still save them. To make this combo a little easier we can go to the settings and then we can auto order triggered abilities so we don't have to click as many times. So that can speed up the process slightly. And the our opponent concedes, they know their writings on the wall and there's nothing in their deck that can save them. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And yeah, we're missing Defiler of Faith pretty much, otherwise we can combo off. And even without Defiler we can still make lots of tokens with Monument. So we'll give this a try. No early Fatal Push. No 2-drop even. So, can hit for 1 and pass. Can be an Elspeth's Nightmare, so we'll pick up the Veteran in response. And then we can play Monument before they can uh, take it away with Nightmare's second chapter. So that worked out nicely. I guess now they can steal my Ajani's Welcome, but Monument's just so much more important. Waste not, sir. Opponent is a discard deck. Okay, let's avoid discarding too many cards. Can play a veteran, make a token, 
attack for two. And then Mechanic can pick up Twinga. So we can keep making more tokens. And then I guess we'll play Twinga, pick up Mechanic. Play Mechanic, pick up Twinga, so we keep the Flash creature in hand, basically. Alright, so we've got a nice army of 1-1 one, one tokens. And gaining a life in the meantime. And as soon as we find Defiler, we can infinitely make tokens and gain life. Inscription, discard two lanes. Opponent makes mana. So they might make us discard Twinga here with another discard effect, Davriel, fair enough. So that could have been a reason to just keep the Twinga in play and discard our lands and be done with it. And our opponent has a zombie that can block our 1-1s. One and Inscription kills Mechanic. That's fine. So we'll pressure Davriel so we don't take too much damage. So three tokens at Davriel to take him out. And that's probably it. And then we can start using Castle Ardenvale as a nice mana sink. No point in attacking with the last token at their face, because then they just block that one, so... That's the best we could do. Another Davriel. At least they're down to one card in hand, and Waste Knot's not very effective when we're empty-handed. Which is one of the issues that these uh, discard decks often face. And the Filer we can cast, perfect. So take out Davriel by attacking with all tokens. Play the Filer. And then, uh, yeah, we're just a uh, core Skyfisher away from going infinite. With your little jewel. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And even though we can gain a lot of life, I don't think I want to keep a one lander without... Defiler or Monument, this is better. And either Mechanic or one Portable Hole can go. Given that we have Skyfisher, which can pick itself up, we don't really need Mechanic. Although, you know, Thoughtseize or some other discard spell could mess that up. Instant Speed Removal on Skyfisher too. I think I still prefer this setup with a more interactive hand with Portable Hole to buy time until we can find Defiler. And yeah, against a turn one Soul Scar Mage, I'm happy to have Portable Hole. So, is her opponent Mono Reds or maybe Blue Red Wizards? Looks like Mono Red. And they're stuck on a single land for now. No point in playing Skyfisher since I don't really want to pick up anything in play. And this is not a May ability, unlike the mechanic, for instance. Right, Arcanists, another kind of must answer. Although, could be okay to take a turn off casting monuments. And then they can maybe draw a card with Fury, not the end of the world. And then next turn, hole plus maybe Skyfisher twice to make a couple of one ones. Kill Fiend scary, that can kill out of nowhere. They have ways to give it trample, so trumping with one once only works for so long. But given the choice, I probably still exile Arcanist, since that can actually draw them more cards and make it easier for them to assemble a kill with Kill Fiend. Now I could also use Skyfisher to pick a portable hole, give them back Soul Scar Mage, and then actually exile both Killfiend and Arcanist. So that's something we can consider maybe a bit later. For now, Skyfisher pick itself up. Can do that twice. Or maybe we just pick a portable hole afterwards. And then uh, since I have another Skyfisher to keep comboing, 
and then exile Arcanist and Kiln Fiend to play it safe. Could buy that too. And then next turn we'll have some fun making tokens. The opponent may not have any 3 damage burn spells at instant speed, so they would need double play with fire to kill Skyfisher to kind of disrupt that whole combo. And then we still have mechanic to pick up another Skyfisher to keep going. Alright, so exiling the two biggest threats. Soul Scar by itself, unlikely to deal 19 damage next turn. But they have another Kiln Fiend. Alright. So, do we flush out some spells here? I think that might be worth it, just because the fewer spells they have, the less likely Kill Fiend is to kill me. So let's say we double block what happens. They play with Fire Shrink down Skyfisher, we still don't kill Soulscar Mage. So probably no point in throwing the extra 1-1 one -one under the bus. Because I don't really care about the Skyfisher other than maybe comboing with Mechanic, but if they're using Play with Fire here then they're less likely to be able to play two on the future Skyfisher. Could also be an Infuriate, but nope, just a Shock, which turns into minus one counters with a Soulscar Mage. Because the way we lose is a Trampling Kiln Fiend and then lots of spells to grow it, and then uh, kill us that way. So the fewer spells in hand they have, the less likely that is to happen. And then we'll eventually take over with Skyfisher, so... So far, so good. And an Ajani's Welcome is excellent too. Now, gaining a bit of life with Ajani's Welcome is great against a burn deck, but against Kiln Fiend, it's not quite that simple since it can still deal upwards of 40 damage with a trample as well so then gaining two or three with a johnny's welcome is not going to make the difference and yeah there's ancestral anger to kick things off crash through more trample so if they can double the kiln fiend's power we could be dead barge in all right so at least they're not going to double its power uh, also can't kill it here so if i take 17 they cast another shock let's say I go to 21, these both trigger, so that's uh, 4 more damage. So let's see, 6 plus 17 is 23, so I have to throw at least one token in front so we don't die to shock. I guess Infuriate is still a concern, another barge in, that's fine. Yeah, I guess Infuriate would have been a reason to block with two tokens there. Another welcome. So now I think I play Mechanic and pick up a Planes, since we don't have a land for the turn, that's a way to generate one more mana. And Mechanic will add a bit more toughness to the board as well. And then I'm just going to play Skyfisher three times, I think that's better than playing a Janice Welcome. Just to make more tokens. But then next turn we'll play Welcome and Skyfisher some more. All right, and that's good enough to prompt a concession. Opponent's out of spells in hand, and it's going to be difficult to overpower all these 1-1s. One on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a very promising hand. So just need a bit of life gain here to support Defiler, but uh, Twinga and Mechanic can pick each other up. And then, uh, yeah, we're good to go. I think I'll keep both creatures in hand to play around removal. Play monuments and then hope they don't have an answer to it. Blood Sun, okay. So they're probably playing a Lotus Field as well. And yeah, we're good to go. Defiler. And then we'll pay a bunch of life to start comboing. And we'll just combo with a Skyfisher since that's easier. Two tokens for two life, that's a fair trade. And we just need to make about uh, 20 tokens here. So 
So we'll keep ourselves at at least four life so we don't die to a lightning helix. But I want to make sure we have enough tokens in case they answer Defiler and we don't get another chance to use it. Although I guess we have Chwinga, which we can use to save Defiler at instant speed. So 13 tokens, plus 5 damage. So yeah, 15. This may be enough. And then uh, I could pick up a land, I could pick up a token. And then we would still be presenting a lethal. Or I can just pick up the Skyfisher itself. And then uh, pass it back. And then if there's a sweeper, Chwinga pick up Defiler. It's probably the play. Now four mana untapped could represent Cell of the Wreckage. But uh, yeah, if I get a million planes, we can also keep comboing with a Skyfisher. So I think we still attack with all, and then Schwinga can pick up Defiler in case of a Settler Wreckage, but I want to make sure we actually present Lethal. Alright, it's going to be Commit to Bounce Defiler. Let's pick that back up. And then do I pay the two life? Probably no reason to. Pick up Defiler and attack. And then the question is whether it's worth it to replay Defiler. Don't think so. We should have enough tokens. So if our opponent has a sweeper, they have a sweeper. If not, maybe it's worth it to pick up the Chwinga as opposed to keeping the mechanic. Since the instant speed is actually useful. And then I guess I'll play Skyfisher two more times. On the off chance your opponent gains a ton of life here, but should not be irrelevant. Okay, pass it back. Does your opponent have a board wipe? Get to untap, and then now don't even have to attack with everyone if we want to keep some tokens for uh, subtle purposes. But most of them can attack. Something like this seems fine. Let's say they have double lightning helix, up to 11, I guess one more. Alright, Teferi's protection instead, keeps him alive. That's fine. So probably no reason to play Defiler Faith. Tokens one by one, not dealing any damage. Okay, and we'll pass it back I think. Can make a token with Castle end of turn to recover from a sweeper. Key to the archive, opponents mostly tapped out, and our opponent explodes, awesome! So not quite infinite in the sense that we had to pay life each time, but still a very nice combo on turn 4. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and yeah, I've gotta keep a hand with monuments, even if it's not perfect with only two lanes but this has the tools to do something powerful. Changeling Outcast, so maybe up against ninjas. And I guess we'll kick things off with an Ajani's Welcome. So no ninjutsu just yet. Can play double Soul Warden, gain some life back. And then hoping for a third land for monuments and then once we get a monument out, the Twingas can sort of pick each other up to keep making more tokens for each one mana we have. Time for ninjutsu. It's gonna be a biting palm ninja. Can take one monument, but we have a backup. So not that big of a deal here. I guess they can take one of the Twingas to disrupt that part of the combo. So we would need another similar creature to combo off, or just a Skyfisher. Can do it by itself. And yep, opponent takes a Twinga. Luckily drew a land for monuments. And then we'll uh, probably attack. They can potentially ninjutsu the ninja to pick it back up. I think that's fine. Don't really want to chump with the Soul Warden. Can chump with tokens in the future. 
Right, they have another Binding Palm, so that can take the other Twinga now. So we'll need another creature to start comboing. But the Twinga by itself also would not have been incredibly exciting. Lunark Veteran makes a token. But now the Outcast can enable future ninjutsu. But uh, yeah, Soul Warden can attack. And then do we even bother blocking Biting Palm? I don't think so. They can Ninjutsu with Outcast anyway, which is probably better for them. Although Infiltrator, I guess, is a reason to chump so they don't draw off uh, Biting Palm. We are gaining a ton of life, so we're not dying anytime soon, so we have time to draw out of it. But our opponent's the one drawing all the cards right now. Fatal push, kill Soul Warden. And Ornithopter, another great ninjutsu enabler. And Outcast. And there we go, Skyfisher, if they don't have another Fatal Push, can make a 1-1 one, one for each mana we have. And gain 3 life. Now if they have another Biting Palm, they can take away Skyfisher from our hand. So I might actually have to leave the Skyfisher in play here. As opposed to keeping it in hand. And yeah, that's enough to prompt a concession. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems great. We've got all the pieces, just need a couple lands. Turn one veteran, turn two, probably not going to do much. But uh, we need both mechanic and Twinga to set up the infinite combo. So for now we'll play a welcome. And yeah, if I can draw lands for the rest of the game, we could actually combo off on turn 4. Invasion of the Giants, opponent on a blue-red giant tribal deck. Don't see those very often. So we might have to watch out for some sweepers. At 5 mana, battle Frost and Fire. Crush the weak, could exile our veteran as well. But found a land for now. Don't think they can necessarily beat infinite life, although gaining infinite life on arena is kind of tricky. Crystal and Giants confirms a giant tribal. So yeah, lands would let us combo off here and potentially combo before they can cast a battle of frost and fire. It's going to be a portable hole instead. So in that case, just portable hole the invasion so they don't get the discount. Seems good enough. I could cast Mechanic plus Twinga just to make some 1-1s. One even though that maybe reveals our plan. And then um, it would leave some of my creatures exposed to removal and be unable to combo. I can also pick up my land since we haven't played land for a turn. But um, yeah, it's still going to leave one of these two in play. Unless I guess we can play this at instant speed. So we can actually, never mind. If we play Mechanic and then respond to the trigger with Twinga, we can actually pick them both back up. Only works because Twinga has Flash. So Flash this in and make some free 1-1s. One and then we'll have both creatures back in hand where they're nice and safe from Sorcery Speed removal. Alright, that's a pretty neat play. So a land next turn still lets us combo off. Play Defiler and then both for Phyrexian Mana, which the Ajani's Welcome will pay for alongside Veteran, but one of them is already enough. Tectonic Giant's fine. Crystalline Giant gains Flying. And still no land, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, I guess we'll do the same trick as last turn just to gain some life, make some 1-1s. One 
So I think we can only play them once, since otherwise the timing doesn't quite line up. Play Twinga. Twinga pick up Mechanic. And then Mechanic pick up Twinga. And then we can still flash this in if we want to. I think that's acceptable. So if our opponent wants to disrupt this combo, they can just keep up some insta speed removal to kill our creature in response. And yeah, there's a battle frost and fire like we suspected, so glad we were hanging on to our two creatures. But yeah, that's a powerful one-sided sweeper. So if they have another one, we could be in trouble, but for now, still hoping for our land. Get to untap. Another monument's not helpful since it's legendary. So yeah, once again, just gonna mechanic plus Twinga. Can play a veteran out of the graveyard for one mana. And gain some more life. Probably have to be in full control for this trick to work, just as a side note. So, started out on two lands, found a third for Monument, but still waiting on land number four to completely go off. But at least we're gaining a bit of life, making some tokens to keep us afloat. And Phantom actually has great synergy with returning our various permanents. Opponents foretells a card, could be Epiphany to take an extra turn, could be Crush the Weak to wipe our board. And that's the one we don't want to see. Alright, there's our land, so play Defiler, see if that resolves. Could also be a counter spell or a Behold the Multiverse to draw. Okay, Defiler resolves. So I want to leave myself with uh, tools to be able to combo again after a sweeper, so we'll have to set up this loop every time where we play Chwinga at instant speed. So it's a little bit more intensive in terms of uh, keeping track of things as opposed to just looping them naturally. Yeah, I don't think we can afford to lose to another sweeper here. So Twinga picks up Mechanic, Mechanic picks up Twinga. It's a fun word to say, Twinga. Otherwise I would be saying Rescuer. Alright, opponent squashes Defiler. Yeah, that's another card they could have had. Okay, we've got another Defiler in hand, so that's not a concern. So we'll pick these both up and uh, might as well attack for one. So we'll find out what card our opponent foretold, whether it's a sweeper or not. And next turn we get to try again. Quakebringer, that also makes sense. Opponent draws two of battle, frost and fire. And Quakebringer does say opponents cannot gain life. So that's a problem. Only have 37 life to spare. So that does stop our infinite combo, can still make a ton of tokens, but uh, yeah, that does severely limit how far this combo can go. Don't have any answers to Quakebringer, so. so our best chance is to combo off, leave ourselves with a bit of a life total cushion, and then have enough tokens to kill the opponent on the crackback, hoping there's no more sweepers, but at this point we can't really beat everything. All right, we take four, and looks like our opponent may have disconnected here, which would be a shame. 
But uh, yeah, we'll play Defiler, and then now with double Twinga, we can even save Defiler from another uh, squash potentially. Although yeah, the Quakebringer is definitely a problem. So I'm not sure how this game would have played out. And our opponent explodes, that's too bad. But uh, yeah, still probably going to keep this game in just because of the mechanic plus Twinga interaction, which was pretty interesting there. So overall, what do we think of this Mono White Defiler combo deck? I do like that it doesn't need to infinitely combo off to present a powerful game plan. Sometimes just having a Monument or just having a Defiler alongside a Skyfisher to replay over and over can uh, generate an army of 1-1 tokens that can take over the game. If the opponent wipes the board, we can still replay the Skyfisher with Monument and keep going. So it is quite resilient in that way. But to truly go off, we do need the stars to align a little bit since we need our turn 3 Monument, turn 4 Defiler, plus Life Gain, plus another creature to keep picking back up, ideally Skyfisher, if not Mechanic plus Tringa can still get it done, but it is a lot of different combo pieces that the opponent can't interact with for the combo to work, so I don't think it's going to be competitive enough for the ranked ladder, but still a very fun deck and definitely a nice home for both Defiler and Monument, and perfect for completing your quests of casting lots of white spells. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.